For those of you that don't know, it is a very, very famous piece. You're going to hear the music and go, oh, I saw that on a movie. Okay, it's very, very famous. It's very fun. It's for huge orchestra, lots of percussion, um, adult chorus, children's chorus, soprano soloist, tenor soloist who's a dying swan. He's getting like burned up. It's hysterical. And a baritone soloist. Uh, the Carmina Burana has some challenges in it. It's not technically difficult for the chorus in the sense that the motives are very straightforward, they're very simple. What Orff, the composer, is working with is uh, primitive blocks of sound that repeat again and again. So it doesn't say A happens and then B and then C, but rather we get different scenes, sometimes a scene with lovers, sometimes a scene with a solo um, priest who's speaking from his from his heart about uh, some confessions that he's making. Uh, other times the chorus functions as sort of the Greek chorus that speaks about the drama in general. So there are all kinds of different aspects of this piece in different roles. We say it's songs of love and songs of happiness and songs of drinking or songs of gambling, but we don't get into too much detail about how much love or how much drinking <laughs> because they're young. So <laughs> their parents can teach them that. <laughs> and you're singing Love Flies Everywhere. Amor volat und ich weh. Try it. Amor volat und ich weh. The chorus sings in the choral terrace. Here in the Meyerson Symphony Center, we're blessed with one of the finest symphony halls in the United States. Acoustically and visually, it's one of the most appealing places that you can possibly perform. So we're very lucky. One of the challenges that we have to contend with as a chorus is the fact that we're spread out over a great width here. If you look at the orchestra, you'll see it's only about 40, 45 feet. But from one end of the chorus to the another, we're looking at hundreds of feet of distance. So we're constantly working on ensemble, careful listening, watching, staying together with the maestro. These are all aspects that we train very, very, very hard to make sure that the performances are of the top level. The discipline starts from the very, very beginning when they enter choir in fourth grade. They learn to do as we instruct them to do. So by the time they're in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, they know how to sit up tall and to be, uh, to be quiet, but they also are able to pay attention to the music, to what is going on. Up nice and tall from the very beginning. You have two four measure phrases to begin, and we're going to start right at uh, right after 103. And is it difficult to stand still for long periods of time? Yes, we sung a uh, Mahler symphony, and we had to sit in the Meyerson for two hours straight without moving. That was probably the worst thing we had to do. That was, but that was really fun. You're focused on what you want to sing and how you're going to sing it to the best of your ability. So you don't really focus on anything besides singing until you're done. But we're lucky here in Dallas to have the Children's Chorus of Greater Dallas. They're beautifully trained, they're musically very, very solid, and they're also trained in the ability to be a part of a performance in a very adult way. And then, at the very end of this, the soprano goes. One of the beauties of the human voice is that we have no intervening instrument. It's just us coming through our bodies to sing. So I would say to, to audience members as they listen, they'll hear this incredible wall of sound from the very beginning of Carmina. It's incredibly impressive. But don't look only for that. Look too for the individuals. See if you can find people who engage you physically because it'll make the performance come alive that much more. I really love to sing and I think that I'm pretty good at it. I'm never really nervous in the concert hall because we have a choir of 90 people and almost if I make a mistake they can carry me and vice versa. Uh, we are now about 190 singers all together. 
uh, all of whom are volunteers. And this is an extraordinary thing about the Dallas Symphony Chorus, that they come and give their time freely. Many of them are professional musicians, they're music educators or singers, but their membership in the chorus is totally of their own free will. So it's an incredible thing to be part of this volunteer organization that nonetheless is so huge. Et Look how long she has to hold it. She will get to see if she does or if she cheats like I would. Stop him, hold him, stop him.